Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Deb. We have a lot to talk about today. Mm -hmm. We finally got our spring stitching sprung. Mm -hmm. And yep. we, we do. We have quite a few things on the table. We're looking forward to it. We have some new devices. We have some old things to share and a lot mm -hmm. of stitching. Yes. Well. <laughs> some of us do. I was busy. It's been several weeks, so she she's thinking about since we were last on our floss friends she hasn't had a lot of stitching time but that's true she's yeah, uh, that's you true. know how she stitches though it's always so gorgeous um i do want to take a quick second and say thank you very much to everybody that left comments and condolences about ivan's passing mm -hmm. and i really appreciate that it's um it really surprised me the hole that's left. Um, I've lost pets before, but this was very different. Yeah. So I am working with UDS again, um, trying to learn the things that have become new since I was there last as a new client. And that's a lot of fun. And I've met the pool of possible puppies. Yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you, I know the four that yes, I might I be paired They're with. So yeah, cute. that's yeah. right. I've been showing her the class pictures. Yeah. Um, so that's progressing and it'll be a while though. It'll be probably fall. Till they're mm. through their intermediate training. Gosh, that'll be here before you know it, though. I know. Yeah, we're already mm. planning activities out through then, so don't go away because you're not going to want to miss them. And we're getting away this weekend, too. So that's going to be fun. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Keep the baby. Goes, I know. <laughs> yeah. See, be a grandma, go stitching. Be a grandma. Oh, that's a tough choice. Oh, my goodness. We've been moving them in, so it has been just fun and exhausting. And I was thinking about that the other day when I was over there helping her set up her kitchen. I didn't get any of those experiences with my mom or vice versa. My mom didn't get any of those experiences with me. You right. know? So it's just so cool to be over there and just setting up, you know, their home. And it's just so sweet. Yep. So, yes, it's, I mean, they, as long as little Rhett is going to wait until when he's due, they'll be in. I mean, they'll be, they'll be in their house. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm pulling so, for that because I have an ulterior motive, which is to get away next week. <laughs> I know. Well, at least we're not that far away. Yes. I mean, it's, you know, we could, I told her, I said, if anything happens, I could, we can leave at a moment's notice. Oh, so, yeah. you know, yep. we're not that far away. Mm -mm. Yeah. Nope. But they're doing good. And, and, uh, Matt opened up the pool. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, it, I mean, it's open. You don't want to swim in it right no. now. <laughs> but no, but I guess they there's had, hope, right? Yeah, they had said that with her swelling, it would really be good. Uh -huh. It would be beneficial for her to get in a pool and swim if she could, you know, because mm -hmm. the water helps push. Which I remember because I had two babies at the end of summer and uh, yeah. same thing. Me so too. I was in the pool every day. I actually uh, got a baby pool. Did you? Put it on the deck at our uh, house we were renting when I was pregnant and just laid in it. And it just felt better on my legs really? just to have, it's just the, the pressure of the, the pressure. Water. Yeah. 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 And it was hot in Maine in the summertime. That's when it gets really hot. Most of us don't have air conditioning because uh, it's only a short period of time up there. Okay. So that was the other way to cool down. Yes. As long as the ducks didn't move in, we had ducks in the woods behind <laughs> us. <laughs> they make a mess out of a baby pool real fast. Oh, they make a mess, period. Yep. Oh, gosh. And, um... I also wanted to say a quick thank you before I forget to um, Peg for the patterns you sent for us to share mm -hmm. and also the one sampler um, that you sent for me. Thank you very much. Yes. And also to Peggy. <laughs> it's funny. Peggy and Peggy. Yes. So thank you so much for all the gifts that you sent along and wonderful things for us to use and share. Thank you. And before I show you some pictures um, and then we're going to wrap up this segment here, but um, I wanted to just um, mention... I was asked about whether we had ever done a video explaining railroading, and we, in fact, did. It was in video number 27. So if you go to our channel and go through the list of videos, uh, you'll see that video. And it does, I think it's the segment called Did You Know? inside that episode. And we demonstrate it and explain its purpose. And thank you. We mentioned that we would like to be able to see some of the work you do and the things that you're being inspired to work on. Um, and we got several photos over the last couple of weeks. Um, swipe left. Mm -hmm. Nope. Other way. There you go. Okay. All right. So we'll start with the peyote. Um, 
this person had never tried it before. Oh, and that'd be great. Pardon me because of the way we're swapping pictures and devices, I don't have everybody's names, but there's four of them here. And she's designed her own. And then there's the one that she did from the class that we have online. Ooh, nice. Yeah, really nice. And then this one, there we go, is um, a little spring. It's sort of like the stacker we showed that uh, Fat Quarter House does on some of their uh, designs. That is cute. And it, it's, it's a cute little spring design. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know what. There I you go. It down. <laughs> That's what I did. Um, yep. Boom. Okay. So this one is a band sampler. It's a beautiful tapestry looking sampler. Mm -hmm. What was it? A magazine. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that came from a, a Leisure Arts, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, it's pretty. beautiful. It might be just cross stitch too. Um, and then last but not least. That looks familiar. Is a version of Cardinal Points that I shared at the spring variety. And um, this... Uh, Stitcher has put uh, family initials down at the bottom there. You'll see where she's changed it out a little bit. So that was really neat. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your stitching. We like to see all the different things people are working on. Cute. So thank you, ma'am. Oh, that's my fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Mine is on the podium. <laughs> all right. So Deb is going to show you what she's been working on. All right. Uh, I did get a little bit done up at the mountains. We went up there for trout fishing. So while well, they fished, I stitched a little bit. <laughs> so I worked on the By the Bay, um, the Serenity Harbor sampler, which is from By the Bay Needle Art. And I am down here in this grassy section. I still have to fill this hole in here. <laughs> so I got like all of this the grassy fill, in, hole. fill in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is, I'm not, I'm not sure what fabric that is. It's been in the works for so long. I cannot remember. So, um, then I did a little bit of work on a Savior's Praise. So this is a Shakespeare's Peddler, uh, pattern, AKA, sorry, uh, right. Teresa Vinette, Kitten Stitcher. <laughs> and this is being stitched on. 40 count um, sheep straw by R&R &R. and I am stitching it over one so it's going to be a real cute little petite size and this is all the way in the middle of the design already so I had this corner pretty much finished there some of these stitches are complete cross stitches and a lot of them are just 10 stitches and then the alphabet is um, Smyrna. <laughs> like how Liz loves <laughs> when I say Smyrna. She makes it into multiple syllables. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Then, oh, you, I guess what I got into the other day. I was just in the mood to do this one. The Prairie Schooler Alphabets. So um, I am working on letter F for friend. I still have to finish the tapestry in E, but I'll get there. Um, we went, I went ahead and uh, bound the, uh, for me, I copied them so that I can write on them, color them, that kind of thing for me to, it's always full coverage, each one you mm. do. So anyway, I really marked them up big time. Um, and it's just easier for me to flip through this way. For the patterns and this is on hmm, it's an even weave mm -hmm. 32 count yes i think and it's being stitched over one and i'm doing three across and nine down so a b and c and d are finished and then i have to finish the tapestry in e and this is the f that i'm working on i think we might have bought logana but i'm not sure yeah I think you're right. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. My mind always goes back to when I saw D up in Canada yeah, doing right. that one. <laughs> Every time I see it, I remember her working on that. She would start off her videos with that piece. 
And then I got a little bit of work done on this piece. And our friend Tina came over the other day and we got a little bit of work done. Fractor Flowers by La Di Da. I did choose my own colors for this. I'm working over here on this cute little bird right now. Um, this is stitched on hazelwood, which is a fiber on a whim fabric, and it's 46 count. We were talking about how much we love fiber on a whim, and you yes. do too. We love that fabric. So I just have the bird's legs. <laughs> it's about his legs <laughs> and a little bit of his Poor bottom. Poor bird. <laughs> Big wind came by, and all that's left are his legs. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um... The other thing that I thought was fun that I worked on was I went to pull up uh, to watch a video on um, YouTube and you know like your feet will come up first and there was a video from Kim from uh, Sassy Jacks. If you remember forever ago <laughs> there was a stitch along I guess like a learning stitches class that she was doing. And gosh, that was like when we started. Land before time. Yeah, that was like early to 2020, right? Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, it, you get a book from uh, the, the book is called Learning Stitches Sampler, and it is a Jeanette Douglas book. Um, check your local needlework store wherever you buy things. And um, I know they had these at uh, Salty Yarns for a while, so you can check it out if you want to get this. There, this sampler that's pictured on the front is actually in this book, in the back. But it's just a bunch of different stitches that either, most of them I have done in the past, but it's really good to refresh your memory because I'll forget how to do them. Or I'll learn little tricks as she's going through the videos. Um, do they have buttonhole stitch in there? <laughs> Not yet. I should stick it in just for the heck of it. Just because on I principle. always forget. On principle. Always forget yep. that one. Yes. Anyway, it was neat to see another um, lesson come up because I really, I kind of gave up on you, Kim. <laughs> In all honesty, I thought, well, I'm just going to have to finish it on my own. And we were up to lesson 10. I think she has 10 and 11 out now. So this was a Florentine Bargello. And I'll show you everything I have so far. It is a lot of fun because, again, it's just fun stitches to do. So I went ahead and put a header up here with 2020. I'm not ripping that out because that's when we started. So I'm just going to leave it in there. And then um, lesson one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this is the one I'm working on right now, which is 10. So for this, um, she stitches using banding material. This is 40 count fabric for me. And I just decided how wide I wanted it to go. And uh, that's why I used the Easy Glide thread to keep my margins on either side. And I'm stitching all different sizes like and shapes of the lessons. And if you remember, if you've seen this, which you haven't seen it in a while, but this squirrel here, I will oh, that will always forever remind me of COVID because I took all day to stitch him. I was going to say, Fred took her forever. Yeah, he did, yes. And I didn't have a pattern for him. I just kind of winged it. And it was fun, but honestly, I stitched on him all day till I was happy with He's how he looked. He's gorgeous, though. I've well, always liked you. Fred. Well, that's, what was it that I gave you at Christmas that had right the there, squirrel? Right there, the squirrel. Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah. I still have it sitting right there. Yep. yep. And then look, you gave me that needle binder. Has that's a squirrel right. on it, so yep. I put that there. Um, but, oh, this is, this is really just so pretty. I love it a lot. <laughs> just introduces my squirrely friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. That's okay. <laughs> so, the what gave me that idea of doing my um pattern this way is i love this berlin uh wool work sampler and see how it's just it's just so Random. cool it, yeah there's yeah. no rhyme or reason to the stitches or or the shapes or how much of it they're doing or how little they're doing and i just think that is so cool looking so that's kind of how i got the idea for this. I didn't want to do it on banding. I wanted to do it on 40 count linen and just kind of choose my own size and just, you know, go from there. Voila. Yeah. And like, this is, I said, lesson 10. So lesson 11, I'm going to take all the way across down here and then I'll have this empty space that I can do whatever with. 
I don't even know what I'm going to put there, but I'll put something there. <laughs> kind of like how I filled him in up here. I put my monogram here. I have the S and the J here for Sassy Jacks because um, that's who the class was through. Um, so again, just like we usually always, or at least I think I do like 99% of the time, I make my stitching my own. I mean, why not, right? You're the one spending time doing it. You're the one that's supposed to enjoy it. Absolutely. Love it. It's your artwork. There you go. So also in this book, because I don't know what else I'm going to add to that, is another book. This um, is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's called The Common Thread. And this is a Jeanette Douglas design. And it's just beautiful. And uh, I have all of the threads. I think we saw Stacy work on that. Stacy was doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous in person. Stacey's I mean, this picture doesn't do it justice. Friend from our guild. Yeah, and... um you know, lots of fun stitches on here. So I might throw some of this in that then at some point, you know, I thought or that would montage. be fun. Yeah. Or both. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what else do I have in here? Oh, look at that. Another Jeanette Douglas. <laughs> this is my Jeanette Douglas bag. <laughs> and this is my stitching album and it's the Rhodes Rhapsody. Um, I wasn't going to turn it into an album, but again, I just, there are some really cool stitches really fun stitches on here. So I'm probably going to throw some of this in there too. Anything else? Hmm. Oh, threads. Nope. That's all. That's it. Ta-da. Wonderful. So, but that was fun to yeah. get back into that one again, because I really do love. Because that bag would have been yourself and you would have uh, not had all those other ones out. And see, I keep telling her, she has to go back and at least get her threads out of there at some point. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's a good point. I didn't say the threads I'm using, I just chose from my stash. Um, I didn't order anything. They are all silks. They're all different kinds of silks. And I just, just picked out a few and that was it. I just went, went with it. Yep. So. All right. That was fun, but that is it for my work. Okay. My turn. Your toy. Oh, and I finally got contacts ordered. And so I'm wearing them today. So these are going to be new, the half glasses while we're doing this, because normally I'm looking through my bifocals. <laughs> and while I have bifocals in these contacts, they're not as strong as my half glasses or the bifocals that were in my frames. Yeah. So I haven't quite adjusted to the bifocal part of this yet. Yeah. So it'll take a while to like figure that out. Either that or they forgot to order the bifocal ones and I'm using a regular monofill. Mm. Cause these are a temporary pair until mine that I ordered came in. Oh, so okay. maybe that would be great. Wouldn't it? If I find out these don't have them in and that's oh. why I need the half glasses. I don't know. Matt, I, he has the same problem you do where okay. he still has to wear his glasses to read, but he needs his contacts for everything else. Okay. And he does have the bifocals in his contacts. Okay. Well then so, maybe it's the nature of the I contacts. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I have new lenses that. I've ordered for mine. And I have not. They've called me out on how many. They've been in for weeks. I'm like, yep. I'll get there. Well, I'm so sorry. I did get notified that Casey's came in. Oh, good. So I'm going to take her Monday. She has another appointment Monday. Um, and I'm just going to do the swing and pick it up at the same time. Yeah. So that'll be good for her. Yeah, I need to get my bottom up there and get it. Um, let's see. Um, what did you work on? Well... First, I think I'll show some new stuff, and then oh, I'll okay. jump into my patterns. Gotcha. Because um, one of the things I worked on, I want... Uh, we have a connection on that, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was given this pattern and had not started it, so it was new to me, but I did kit it. It's a strawberry called Expect Less, and it's from a club... Um, and it's just really pretty. There's some companion pieces to this as well. Um, I did pull the threads out on it. I'm going to use Tyco for this, uh, which I thought was pretty. But the threads are pretty too. Whoops, those are just my basic DMC. And I pulled out a Sullivan's White just because I was too lazy to go look for the other one. <laughs> um, it's funny how you have some really different threads hanging around your general stash. But the, while there's not a lot of large areas to stitch the palette's pretty and pretty. i kind of liked it on that tyco mm -hmm. so that's the the color palette and it's a 32 count 
So that's going to be fun. Yeah. I kitted that up this week. And then Here, I'll put that together. Thank you. Then I had two things to show you just because of something else I got uh, to help things along. With my peyote work, this is um, this is a pin I did. It was a Mill Hill kit. A long time ago I got this and did it. A lot of fun. Um, but it's broader than most of my fobs. And you know I use the um, peyote, thank you, quick start cards. So I ordered some more of those because I'd actually gotten to the place where I needed more. <laughs> and I'd worn them through so much. Um, gosh, I've had the same card for years now. Yeah. And then I got the tubular starter, which I had never seen before. So that's going to be fun to use. And then this is one of the tubular pieces that I did. And that was also a Mill Hill kit when I got it. So if you didn't have the tubular one, how did you... This was just done by instructions. You use the actual... I did it on the tube as I did it. Wow. Um, and I'm anxious to see how this starter card helps. The yeah. You do it on the end of the starter card, so it's wow. it's going to be interesting. I'm anxious to see if it makes doing these as much easier as the other card makes doing my fops. Okay. So I thought that okay. would be fun. Because if, if you do it the old-fashioned way, I'll use that expression, um, you start um, with two needles until you get the baseline done, and you drop a needle here and there. Anyway, I just like the card thing. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. And fast. <laughs> I like fast. <laughs> I'm working on something fun that you'll see at finishes, um, but these came in the mail. And those of you who do any um, Amigurumi uh, characters or dolls probably know what all these are, but they're the little eyeballs, noses, and things that go in your little <laughs> uh, crocheted pieces. <laughs> and then um, I had another little case. They all came in that little case, which was nice. But then I got this little case out and I put in the spacers that go in the back and the little all wow. that they sent. This is for uh, the surgical implant <laughs> <laughs> of the little part. But with crochet, it's not hard to get this little guy started. I, if you have fabric that's really tight, yeah? I could see using okay. the all. But crochet is so loose, you can just you sort of screw that in there. Yeah. 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 Some cases you just kind of push it in. Okay. <laughs> it just pops right in. Oh. Then I got to some fun patterns that were new. This is a scattered seed sampler called Acts of Kindness. It's a pin key pillow. Yeah, that is so pretty. And I like the colors. They were really pretty. Um, I'll just leave it all together here. I'm going to use this um, piece of paper bark from Fox and Rabbit. Mm, pretty. Yeah, and I thought it would be pretty with that. This oh, is a little yeah. more um, variegated probably on the picture, but... And then that's the color palette, uh, all over dyes. You know and what you could do? You could use that spray. Right, on, on this. That. that would be yeah. pretty, wouldn't it? It would kind of give this look to it. It would. Yep. That'd be cool. If you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's this sort of distressed part of the fabric that we're talking about that you yeah. see around the bunnies. There's a, there's a the spray flowers. that we showed, oof, yeah. gosh, forever ago. Called Distress It. Yeah. I was actually just looking at that the other day when I was out checking on that video uh number oh, i love that one that's pretty isn't it that's this beautiful. is another scattered seed samplers piece called gathering together um mm. i just that really so like the I bird too. and of course it's got some nice oh, blues in it that's what i thought too and this with those bunnies you know oh, fill yeah. this little bowl up with the yeah. same stitch colors would be nice and this is um an ellen chester pattern it's uh called Quaker Sampling 6. And I happen to have one of these bobbins, um, the spools. spools, thank you, uh, at home that's this size. And I thought that would be neat. Now, I yeah. probably won't do it in the red. You're probably going to see this in either like blue or some nice variegated silk of some kind. Mm -hmm. I have one that's called country woods do you remember it's either silken colors or gloriana i can't remember mm. but it has some really pretty browns in it that Ooh, would be nice on that would be pretty on that design and it's not um uh, overly variegated okay. so you're gonna get real subtle uh, yeah a really soft movement in it okay now let's see i was trying to think of where i found some of these things um the gathering together pin keep i just showed you i ordered 
um, online. And then this next piece I also ordered online. This was a PDF. Oh, and Acts of Kindness. That was one of those days I just said, I need retail <laughs> therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to us too. <laughs> this is uh, the Bunny Quaker and it's samplers and primitives. And mm -hmm. it's just really pretty. I mm -hmm. had this to show you during our spring one. And at the end, it was sitting off to the left. And I had <laughs> totally forgot to share it. So that's that one. Mm -hmm. And this was another victim of that uh, set aside. That because they were PDFs and I had them pulled aside. This is called Spring is Coming Mini Quaker. And this is by Stitches Through the Years. And it's, it is a really cute size sampler. I got the winter and spring, and I showed the winter one when oh, we did yes, our variety. Oh, yes, I remember that one, yeah. Yep, so those are fun. Um, <laughs> and then I I am happy oh. to say that when Dev and I were talking not long ago about my ordering the Lila Studio pattern from um, Nashville that was just released, and I said something about ordering the other sampler the spring sampler. And she said, you didn't order that, did you? I said, why? She goes, we have it. Then I looked and sure enough, we did. And then I was like, man, now I'm going to have one, two of them. But I didn't. You didn't? I didn't. I only ordered the summer Quaker one, which I was oh, happy about. Good. Isn't that oh, gorgeous? My God. I'm telling we you. hadn't seen this in person together. It just came in and mm. I hadn't showed her. It is gorgeous. And that I love, so pretty. I love the I hate to say this out loud, but I love the border. Um, borders and I don't always get along very well, but this is different. Oh, this would be so fun. It's so different. I love it. It is so pretty. Look at the... I, that's my one of my isn't favorites. Isn't that cool? That Quaker up there with the, the crab. Yeah, oh my top gosh. center. Uh, I mean, that is just adorable. This yeah, the, is fantastic. There's a lot of... Uh, innovation in that yes it looks so traditional until you start looking at it very closely and you see all mm. the different changes she put in and, and I, she said on instagram that you actually do fill in the whale and the and the um ocean here uh-huh but she ran out of time ah so she had to have a photograph like that okay but it's so it's so cute it is so now i just as a added i don't want to say benefit because people are going to go you're enabling us you're not benefiting us but <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that we, we've we looked at Lila's studio for a while. This is uh, a Quaker welcome, which is another one that yeah. I really, really like. Yeah. And I think what's going to happen is I'm going to pull some of these and put them on my montage, just like yeah. Deb's doing, because I'm never going to stitch the entire, all of these full samplers. And you'll see, if, if you've watched my montage videos, I have put a Quaker welcome on yep. pieces of the Quaker welcome on my montage as well. Yeah. And then I also have um, the Holiday Quaker. Deb and I waited for this to come mm -hmm. in at, um, at uh, Salty Yard. Yeah, that one is really pretty. I it love Because I love the Santa boots down here. Yes. It's yes. so fun because you're just kind of lo looking and so, oh, there's a Santa hat. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. She she is Aww. very creative. She's very these. creative, yeah. So that's um, Holiday Quaker. So there is also a Halloween one and Steve... Mm, yeah, stitched did, that one yeah. and that was incredible yeah. as well he's probably stitched them all um yeah oh gosh this is just so clever yep huh all right if you look any longer i have to charge you <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> so that's the newer stuff that i had come through the door it's been collecting on my counter there for a little while um but now i'll show you what i've been working on because this has been fun too there's a Something else along with this pattern, but you'll see it a little bit later when we have something else in store. Mm -hmm. This is Thimble Purse. It's called Home Sweet Home. I'm grateful that someone that we know, Stacy, had this in her stash. I am actually looking for berries and birds, the other Thimble Purse oh, that okay. they have. I really like that one as well. Um, and I already did the schoolgirl. Mm -hmm. um, thimble purse and I started it just to see about the color on the bramble this is bramble and I really like that and it's 40 count easy to work on over two and then this is the color palette for it which I really like yeah, that too beautiful. and on this fabric hmm. I really Very like pretty. it on there Deb and I were talking today and she helped me with some 
uh, color choices and we were comparing what we see when we look at these and it was a lot of fun and <laughs> and I realized there are some cones in my eyes that don't work the way hers do because there are certain hues and contrasts that I do not pick up on at all um, so that was interesting and we'll show you how that came into play because uh, it was pretty <laughs> interesting and then the um, the hardware that goes on the thimble purse I got it off of Etsy oh, it's okay. a cute little yeah piece of hardware and I I do have another one I was saying to Deb I have another one from the previous thimble I bought them in a set of three colors but I'm not sure where they are and I didn't want to run the risk of not having it mm. so I ordered another one this is a long time coming uh, in this last month or so I've had some time and it's my Monopoly board and I realized looking at this with Deb last week they give you two versions. This is the more contemporary Monopoly board with the man in the middle. And then this is the original Monopoly board that just said Monopoly on it. So you can finish it both ways. I like the little man, so I'm going to do it that way, <laughs> I think. And then I started on the first uh, page of the pattern, and it's actually a corner, and they do it in corner sections. So this goes across the bottom at the start and then there'll be another section that comes up here on that same page that goes past luxury tax. So those are the two sides that I'm on. No, let's see. Income tax. It goes to luxury tax on one side and community chest on the other for this first side. And then you just rotate it. It's almost like doing a, a mandala. Each quarter of it is done on a different <laughs> set of pages so it goes fun and fast because it's on uh, even weave and I did change out some stitches on the borders I'm going to do all Smyrna stitches the count worked out perfectly so I'm going to be able to do that banner on the top of these using that larger stitch which will actually shorten the stitch time mm -hmm. a little bit um, although I was counting as I did the Smyrna and I thought wait I'm going over four stitches but I'm having to make more stitches. Six long. <laughs> so I'm not so sure it's a complete trade-off, but I like the look of it. I think it gives it... I, wa I thought about it, and I thought I want it to be sort of a statement of needlework as well as a game board. Yeah. So for people to really appreciate the intricacies of needlework, I thought it would be fun to change out some yeah. stitches. So that will be ongoing. And then this is going to be a re- think oh you haven't touched that in a long time i know i had it done up i had started at the top and i had worked down to this alphabet here part way in just to make sure i had it all started on this side yeah. and as i looked at this picture the other day when i was going through my projects i thought you know i really like that okay this is not my favorite mm-hmm I think it's the combination of colors, but I was just showing Deb, this top portion above the large dark text doesn't do as much for me as this mm -hmm. portion of it. So I took my fabric and I took out the stitches. I could show you, I did save them. I was going to show you what 250 stitches in a little ball looks like. <laughs> But I took out all of the work that I had done here in this section and across the top and I took the border off and I'm just going to replace this top portion with the same style border as it has on the sides. Okay. The two and two alternating. And then I'm just going to start that dark section and go straight okay, down. So you're not bringing this nope. down? Nope. Okay. I'm taking this border just going across the top. Okay. So it'll cool. have the same and we can see that Liz is able to do that. <laughs> we have evidence of that. So this should go much better. That's a Liz border. Yes. <laughs> this is a childproof border. <laughs> Yay. Oh, oh, yeah. And in case anybody wanted to know, the whole border's done in 924. <laughs> this is my sewing basket by Manny Didana. Um, my tuna can. Been working on that for a while too. And I did get that row extended some more, so that's Yay! nice. Your tuna can's growing. Yep, we're almost done with the this portion and then we'll go to work on the top. <laughs> and keep on going till we put it on a can. That'll forever be your tuna can. Stitch. This is 
still gonna haunt me. I have to work so slowly on this border because I still have not figured out. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Wyndham House sampler. And this gray that border is... does not oh, like me. Oh my gosh. I'm If I just look at X's and completely leave out the way the design flows, I'm okay. But as soon as I start to look at the way that design flows and start to figure out what way would I like to do this and make this easy to do, Mm. I miscount it. So I did get another full scoop on it. <laughs> another swag on my house. Border is done. Oh, gosh. So, well, I haven't given up yet. Good. Good, good. Because they're pretty <laughs> colors. I like that. And now we have one of the two rabbit samplers. <laughs> um, this is by Lottie Da. And I'm doing these little bunnies as a stand-up bunny that I'm going to finish and it's very small. This is 56 count and it's parchment. And I added his leg and his little bottom with the tail. Mm -hmm. I only had that upper arm and the, I think I added the flower I was too. Say you added the flower. Just had the yeah. stem on it before. So he's, he's coming into shape there. Now is that full cross or tent? Full. Okay. I'm doing a full cross over 56. And I enjoy it and I like it, but you can see every now and then when my eyes got tired because <laughs> it, while it, it's done properly, mm -hmm. for some reason, it's just, it's a little wonky on the stitches aren't quite so even there, but if you're going to get that close well, to it. Well, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. nobody's going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> just don't do that once I have it stuffed or I will um, put it up your nose. <laughs> I'll write on the frame. Get really close to this one. Yes. <laughs> sniff. <laughs> scratch here. <laughs> Chocolate bunny. <laughs> it's a scratch and sniff. Yes. Um, this is a Maryland crab, a Maryland flag crab. <laughs> I'm doing the top picture there. And this is by Pat Yergi. And I've had this for quite a while. And I started this, you might have seen it on our Floss Friends. And I'm doing the outlining of the sections. And then I can fill it in at nighttime <laughs> without having to count. So I'm working on that. I love that fabric you're doing it on. And it's very nice to stitch on too. Good. Yeah. It's um, a piece of, I believe it was um, country mocha that was not vintage. vintage. I think I got that up in Nordic Needle. Okay. Now I'm going to show one more thing, and then I'm going to let Deb do some trip, subscriber tribute, okay. and then um, she's going to take you into another chapter that kind of ties together with this. Uh, this is the uh, quarterly stitch through Fat Quarter Shop, and it's called Sweet Land or Sweet, Sweet Laurel. Laurel, and it's. Um, it's not a very large design, but immediately when I saw it, I thought about this piece I had in my kitchen. Uh, I've got it kind of taken apart here, but my grandmother stitched this a long time ago. Hmm. It's 87. And I've had that and I've had it up by the door. We hang our keys on it, which I've taken those out because I'm going to paint this. Um, and I'm going to put this on our door in the kitchen. And I'm going to put that design right in there and oh, cool. turn it into our key holder. So I'm thinking I'm going to paint it sort of dark only because people's hands on this thing all the time, mm -hmm. uh, putting keys on and off might be good to have it a little darker. Mm -hmm. But this is the um, cream and sugar by fiber on a whim that came with the stitch quarterly. And I really like those colors. So I might, ask your help in picking out some acrylic paint or something that okay. you think would be pretty on that. Okay. And then the needle minder came with the stitch quarterly too. They always do their stitch quarterlies really cute. Yes. So, um, and if you would like to see what it looks like, it came in this bag. Yes, it did. Um, and like Liz said, you do get some goodies with it. So that there's your chart and you get the floss which is all DMC on this one and the needle minder. And then they sent, they always have some cute things in here, but they have a cute little luggage tag that has the picture of the laurel on the back. And you could just hang this off your bag as well. You or know? Put on but, your um, 
this fabric that it came with that Liz showed, it's Ada and it is by far Fiber on a Whim. And Fiber on a Whim's Ada is absolutely wonderful. The feel of it, yeah. oh my gosh. That's very fan soft. It's fantastic, Ada. So if you are looking for some something different to try, if you've never stitched with fiber on a whim, Ada, I would definitely suggest trying that out. It's wonderful. And I've got quite a few of their Ada colors, and I'm yeah, I'm not thinking of any of them that they probably don't have it in. I don't know. I but I just They've love got the a feel huge of range. it. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, that is a. You can get the stitch quarterlies through Fat Quarter Shot. And yes, our subscriber tribute bell went off. So this is the time in our video where we like to say a specific thank you to everyone who subscribes. But once you become a subscriber, uh, we then, for each video, get to, um, well, we don't, the computer does, but it picks a new subscriber that we can then um, say thank you to on our video and send you something fun. So today, if you would like to hold those two up, Certainly. please, we would like to say a specific thank you to Katie, the novel stitcher, and you will be getting Strawberry Harvest by Cottage Garden and also Beezy Spring. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And their Cottage Garden does such cute patterns yeah and we uh showed you not long ago in the um series we're doing with the animals mm -hmm. um i can't remember the actual name of it but this I'm is excited. a time for all seasons that's the series that these two come from yes yes and a special thank you to another um subscriber n fender and you will be getting you're going to get a pattern by Vicki Hastings, Summers at the Lake. Oh my gosh, that's cute. Isn't that cute? Oh, there's so much you can do with that. Well, I know. I started thinking, how cute is that? Like, even in our pool house, in the bathroom, uh -huh. or any bathroom, if you have like a, I don't yep. know, nautical theme, it's just exactly. so stinking cute. Yes. And then, in addition to that, a Scarlet House design called Little Deeds Sampler. Little deeds of kindness, little words of love make our earth an Eden like the heaven above. That is adorable. Yeah. So, so thank you for your subscriptions. Yes, thank you very much. And my email address is in our description box under the video. So if you can email me, then I can get your goodies out to you. With our last video that we did, not our floss friends, the one before that, Liz had two giveaways. There were two keywords. Um, the first one was ba, <laughs> and that goes to Wendy S. Miller. And that was a Barbara Anna design. It's a a little sheep and it's a biscor new pattern mm -hmm. it's adorable it is cute and the next one your keyword was spring and this is going to go to quilt nut 851 and it's called spring silhouette bunny tells puppy don't chase bunnies <laughs> 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 and it has a little bee charm still with it down here that goes on it it's a very simple stitch it's adorable i hope you'll enjoy it yeah, so congratulations again get a hold of me we need one that has um, dog don't chase squirrel for, <laughs> for Charlie. There you go. <laughs> All right. And then if you want to talk about that sure. one. Sure. I have a, an adoption. Um, it's a Little House Needleworks kit. Um, it's called Spring Sampler. It's very, very uh, pretty colors. You'll see them in just one second. Um, they stitched theirs on 32 count. You can do it personal preference any way you want to. But this will give you an opportunity to actually try um, these threads and they are silks. Um, they're very pretty. So if you would like to adopt this kit, let's use the word um, sampler. Well, oh, okay. We usually just have the word adoption, but do you want Oh, to, good. Is that okay? Nope, go back to adoption. Okay. I forgot we were doing more of those this time. Oh, that's all right. Um, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Here's then, another one. Too. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, I have something that I would like to pass on because I'm not going to stitch it, but the entire kit is here. It is from Bent Creek and it's called the, I guess it's called the Big Zipper. <laughs> um, can you hold that one for I me, will. please? I was actually thinking, this... let's call the other one Adoption 1 and we'll call this one Adoption 2. 
Okay. I didn't start this one though. That's okay. Uh, okay. I didn't start the other one. Okay. The spring sampler one. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so this comes with all of the patterns in the pieces. You know, you'll stitch it like piece by piece with the threads that are in each one. This is the outside border, uh, basically, with one of the stitches in there. <laughs> I will show you. This is the finished picture. <laughs> okay, Vanna. <laughs> this is the finished, pic finished picture. Um, it's big. I mean, it, it's great. You have everything there to uh, to go ahead. I think the only thing you're going to need is fabric. This is sort of like all my samplers. This is Liz's sampler. <laughs> this is Deb's <Dad's> sampler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Charlie. Um, so if you are interested in stitching this Bent Creek, um, Liz said... Adoption 2. Adoption 2. Do you want the number 2? Or yes, the... please. Okay, adoption and then the number two. Okay. And the other and... one is adoption with the number one. Ooh. Yeah, look how clever I am. <laughs> I'm going to write this down too because it will trick myself right out of remembering. Oh, gosh. All right. Okay, give me one second. And please oh, be a subscriber because yes. we will check um, before we uh, send those out. And speaking of subscribers, before I push on, I wanted to just say that we do appreciate it. It's it's encouraging for us. We've been doing this in our sixth year now. Um, and we'd like to do something to uh, honor subscribers at 29,000 and then also 30,000. So I was trying to think of what we could do that seems to be something people enjoy from previous mm -hmm. uh, subscriber milestones. So on the 29,000 milestone, when we hit that, I will allow whoever enters into the comments to uh, participate, uh, the subscriber to choose from three designs that I've designed of peyote fobs. And then at 30,000, I will let you choose from three designs I share that were Fern Ridge collections patterns. So, um, well, get us to those milestones and I'll show you your choices. Nice, so, thank you. Keep going. Cool. And we had, we have a few more things real quick to share from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, so any of these, if you are interested, you can go right there to um, grab them. This is a beautiful quilt pattern. Um, so this is designed by Lori Holt, uh, Be In My Bonnet, and this is called Home Again. Thank you. Let's see. And then we have <clears throat> from the Chicken Club. <laughs> this is Florence. This. I pulled out the other one, and they are <laughs> cute together. The little peep behind them yeah. is the same <laughs> on both. And it was funny because I was thinking to Good myself, catch. thank you. I was thinking to myself about that show Hop, the Easter movie. Yeah. And I remembered the little chick's name. It's Phil. Phil. Okay. He always says, Phil! <laughs> Do not dance. Did you watch that yet? Not that this yet. season. I have it on my uh, my digital movies, Aww. so I have to pop it up. Um, this is a fantastic book called Summer Memories, uh, making memories one stitch at a time. So again, you can get this through Fat Quarter Shop. And these are the really pretty. Very, very beautiful. This is a great book. Mm -hmm. And then some beautiful uh, quilt designs. This is Frisia. Autumn Skies. The title, Freesia, reminds me we were playing a game yesterday, the girls and I. It's called Bananagrams. Did you ever see oh, that game? Oh, is that the one that comes in the yep, shape of a banana? And it's tiles, like a Scrabble game yeah. almost. Just letters, no points. And you build your own crossword with them, and your goal is to use up all the tiles you're given. And when the pile is down to one less than the number, and you've not got any tiles left, you scream um, bananas and the game's over. But I looked up the word freezy, F-R-E-E-Z-Y. Okay. Because I thought it was a word and it actually is. And and it's funny because when I first thought of it, I thought of freesia and I thought, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying freezy. <laughs> and it is a valid word. So it worked in my puzzle. Good. Um, we showed the 
stackable for January last time. This is the stackable for February. Yes. Very cute. That's what that little spring pattern sort of reminded me of that yeah. they showed from that yeah. viewer. So again, all of that is from Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you very much, Fat Quarter Shop. Yes. Keep up the good work. Okay. It amazes me the number of designs that our needlework designers can continue to mm. generate. It's mm -hmm. just yeah. beyond it's my endless. imagination. Yep. Okay, so a couple of quick things. As I was... I did get back into my craft room again to play with things, but I ran across a couple things that were, in my opinion, at least worth, worth mentioning because we hadn't gotten back around to them for a little while. One of them is the tennis shoe stitching we were doing. And this came up because I was looking for cream wool felt. Could not find it anywhere locally in uh, stores. So I went to a yarn store that had wool felt and I found this pretty gray. And I thought about this and I thought, you know, a gray bunny would be cute too. Mm -hmm. So I picked up a quarter, uh, like a, a fat quarter, but it's a yard, not 27 inches. They go the full bolt. So it's a little bigger. Then as I was looking at the pattern, I went, wait a minute, that would go on my sneakers. This was something I did in 2019, I think, with Clara, my neighbor. She had seen this on Pinterest, wanted to learn to do it. And she did her own embroidery. And I did the design for her using the picture she had from Pinterest. And you embroidered around the Converse logo on the shoes, which I will say you will need a thimble. This is extremely <laughs> difficult. And I wanted to get it between the two plies of the denim for her. So she actually was able to do it without the work being visible inside the shoe because this is double. And she got it done and she got to wear them. I think she wanted to wear them on her um, trip to Hershey Park Aww. for the spring break or yeah. spring trip. But whatever it was, or retreat, whatever. Um, she finished hers. I got a pair. I had started doing some work around it on both shoes. I only brought the one today. Um, but I didn't care for what I had done and I didn't care for the color choice. So I thought I'm going to put it on hold till I find the right thing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this design. And I showed Deb that the logo is actually on the inside of the shoe. So I don't want to do something in here that's not going to be seen unless yeah. I'm stepping out. So I'm going to do it along here and, mm -hmm. and see if I can't get that, uh, sort of, grass flower pattern to flow here on the outside of these yeah. so that that will be fun cute so that was the connection i did there then you may recall that i have been looking let me for... put your shoe back together <laughs> thank you <laughs> remember my man had done a tin can tuna can uh this was the first one i picked out of hers called quaker sewing box i've been in my stash a while and i've been looking till i could find a way to see the colors they got their colors from Romy's creation well this is the color that's referenced in the picture and also on the wood that goes with it the pretty laser cut stuff and so I finally thought you know what I'm gonna find it I'm gonna order it and then I'll get started because I could not find any reference like color comparisons between Romy's and DMC or Overdyed. So I ordered it. Now, this starts quite a conversation. These are the colors that arrive. Black Tulip and Camouflage. They look very dissimilar to the colors that are in this pattern. That's the picture. To me, there are blues in that pattern. And I can see a little bit of green in this, maybe. I'm going to show you this, because this is the, the closest we have. These are the colors. I just, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't, I can't see that. And not only can't I do it and see that, but I also, in trying to find an alternate color, couldn't do that on my own. I did pick a blue silk and another variegated silk, but I think this would be too busy for that design. So Deb agreed. She, she just very quickly agreed. <laughs> and um, so I had picked out this blue that I had Gloriana. And I showed her that. And I said, 
I could just do it all in one color. She shook her head no. She said, I would look for another blue, maybe not silk, and try to match that picture. So I'm going to let her take over here because <laughs> this becomes the part where you're going to understand why the cones in my eyes are definitely different than the ones in her eyes. <laughs> I don't see this until she did it. So I, I chose, this is called Peacoat and it is from Weeks Dye Works. So hopefully this is showing for you, but to me, it looks more like the picture. Um, I love this one that Liz picked out. It looks like the lighter color in here. And then for the darker color, like in the birds. Uh, and I also think it looks absolutely beautiful with the painted wood piece that they send along with it. So I think that is going to look more like what Liz wants it to look like, which is this picture instead of the green and the purple, which is what I see here. Yeah. I don't see blue there and I don't see gray. I see green and purple. Yep. Now it's funny because when we were looking at this, to me, I mean, this is, this is purple to me. Um, no, I'm not talking bright purple or anything, but that's what I see when I look at that is purple. I saw she gray. She sees gray. Yep. Yeah. So it was just really interesting. And Carrie, my daughter, immediately said purple when she saw it. And, and she's much better at putting my clothes together than I am. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I picked this darker uh, blue color out, I, I wanted to show her because it has the same kind of um, uh, green, like hue as the first color she picked out a lot of the i can't just go over there and pick like a blue it doesn't then it doesn't look right with this color here let's use so, this blue <laughs> yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily <laughs> want that blue <laughs> no. but um so i was showing her like in this variegated thread in some of the lighter pieces of it really i mean it all blends it all goes I, it's gonna look gorgeous but it, it reminds me of this first color that she chose it does um and then she could see it so i think it's gonna be beautiful yep. and i can see after looking at it now for a while the green tone that you were talking about but definitely not mm -mm. anything close to those threads mm -mm. i'm you know i know that thread colors change too and these threads are pretty but you can save them for something else. Yep. I absolutely will. And you need green and purple. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or two shades of blue. <laughs> so anyway, um, the funny thing is that the other kit I bought at Nashville last year that is also by Manny Dodonna, and it had these beautiful uh, accessories that came with it. They're beaded, and she had a separate kit with that. So I had intentionally gone uh to see her to ask about it and they're almost identical shades in the pictures of these two um and yet they all used weeks dye works over dyes and when i look at those blues they look like the picture to me so my mind was saying well i could use those same colors here but then i wouldn't have known which of those because there's like four or five blues so okay this they'll at least look similar now when they're done <laughs> they won't look quite so far apart really pretty yes very pretty and the very last thing i wanted to share with you that i ran across um it's kind of kind of interesting because we are going to be um getting together in the next month or so with some friends um, in Mount Gretna that mm -hmm. we've come to know and we enjoy stitching with. We're honorary members of their Saturday <laughs> group. Um, two of them uh, are responsible for what I'm going to share with you. Brenda Coker is a designer. She has several patterns out. She does very unique mm. needlework, yeah. not your basic cross stitch. And she has a technique that she does that we'll share with you down the line. I'm still working on <laughs> learning it at home. But um, this is called Bullion Bird's Nest, and it's appropriately labeled because those are bullion stitches that make the nest inside those green leaves. And it comes as a little kit, and it has all the goodies in it. Um, and we had the same game with colors on this one, only I passed the test on this one. <laughs> These were the, the nest colors that came. And I kind of wanted it to match more of the twiggy look that's in our backyard. We have a lot of birds that use those. They're mm -hmm. actually pieces of wood, mm -hmm. not grass. So I pulled out some darker shades of over-dyed um, putty and dirt road. 
as the colors I want to use for my bullion stitches. And then, um, I don't know if you can see them both. And then if I want to throw a lighter one in there, I'm going to use this light khaki um, and throw a couple of light ones in. So that'll be what's on it. It's very simple size. That's the size that you use to do your bullion stitches around and fill in. And then the beads go in there and then you gather it, the line that you gather it on to go together in the nest um, and finish it. The cutting size is right at this little three inch loop. So it's, it's very mm -hmm. small, very quick. Um, I'm anxious to start it. Yeah. So when I get it finished, you'll see And that was actually it. designed by Pat Salata. It was designed by Pat and it was, and the instructions were done by Brenda. And Very it was cool. put out through her design company. So cool. this will be fun. And ladies, Good way I, to practice if I, your bullion. Yes, that's what I was thinking. And if I get this done in the next few weeks, you'll see it. But then I'll, I'll take it as a show and tell when we go <laughs> yeah. see that. <laughs> Look, I did it. <laughs> so anyway, that was fun. I remember the first time we did that stitch. It was when we were taking the Brazilian needlework yes. class at... Um, Nordic Needle. Nordic Needle. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the very first time we were doing bullions, oh my gosh. It takes now, a little bit to When we did get it them there, pretty. they gave us Milner needles, remember? Yeah. And I think I'm going to try that. Um, but I went online just to see about the bullion stitch before I talked about it here um, to make sure there was something somebody could reference and if okay. they needed additional help. And there's plenty of opportunities. Mary Corbett, again, we talk about her regularly. She's an excellent instructor, mm -hmm. um, a wonderful channel. But I ran across one and the way they did their stitch, and I think the instructions also support this. They come up at A, down at B, and then up at C to start the wrapping. Yeah. But they use the loop they leave between A and B and wrap it with that loop yeah, oh. it's it's different. It's not the exact same way you and I were taught to stitch it. No. So because it would lay differently then, wouldn't it? Um. Like you wouldn't be able to place it wherever you wanted because it's pretty much placed. Where you come up and down is your is yeah. like your placement window. Right. If I where, understand where the directions it, correctly, we could. Direct Place, it. Yeah, we could direct it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I'll learn more as I go. That's why I said I just checked it out quick to see, but uh, it'll huh. be interesting. Yeah. So cool. stay with us on that if you want to play and learn a new stitch. And I'll probably bring my um, little stitch frame along that I can show them with a bigger needle. You know how to do the stitch when we do it or how I did it anyway. Gotcha. All right. All right. Now we have... Yes, we have uh, something a little, fun. We're at Gadget Corner first, or do you want to go oh. whichever way you want to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll 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 gadget you first. <laughs> um, we have a revisit and something new. Um, I think we'll start with the revisit. Uh, I was playing in the craft room, and I had my. Uh, little ort box sitting there and I have a little magnet that I attach to the top for fun that's seasonal I have a couple of them and I sometimes drop this and while it has a magnet and it will stay there I was playing with my little fabric holder that I use <laughs> around my hoop and I thought I wonder if that would hold that on there well then I realized if I put it at the bottom on both sides it becomes a handle and the lid won't pop off while it's over the top. And then as a little labor saving device, you can just slide the lid down to the side. So how's that for not enough to do that you can sit and figure this out? But that was funny. How many different ways can you use can that? Can you use a silicone wrap? And you might remember they come in all shapes and sizes. All different flavors. Yes. And multiple colors. So anyway, that was fun, but that was just because it was silly. Um, the one thing I wanted to share after our discussion about what kind of fabric people like to stitch on and what they're they're drawn to um, is this fabric gauge. It's put out by Yarn Tree. Comes in a little sleeve, real simple, very inexpensive, under three dollars. Most places you find it. Local needle workshops, most of them have it. It is as simple as being able to count to ten. 
you lay this gauge with four that's six, not gonna eight. work <laughs> you lay this gauge on your fabric okay got it and as you lay it there you line it up across the line of your fabric uh, actually in line with a thread parallel and then you count 10 threads and see where 10 threads intersect this slope and at that point it tells you exactly the count of your stitches so the slope is equal to the progression of threads in an inch if that's not mind-blowing all you math geeks like me you'll find <laughs> that really fun so it is very easy that easy lay yeah. it down count to 10 you nailed it i used to get my roller mark an inch sit there with my magnifiers <laughs> count the threads yes don't need that anymore just a 10 and you're done yep. especially comes in handy when you're working on thread like 56 count i don't want to count 56 of them and then find out i'm off one mm -hmm. <laughs> so 10 will do it yeah. this does go all the way up to 40 count oh okay so that cool. would come in handy Wonderful. if you've got those pieces of fabric laying around that you can't quite remember what it is over a year ago maybe mm, yeah probably we showed you a product that we thought would be helpful for working with patterns or doing things in your craft area or if you like to use markers crayons pens you're an artist it's a light board our friend alan this was it he contacted us and we shared this with you um it has a a light button and it it goes up and down to, am I on the wrong side? Uh, I'm missing, where'd our button go? Uh, it's on the side somewhere. Sorry. Um, it's over here. With each click, after you turn it on. But I don't know if I have this one charged. Yeah, oh, I do. there we go. I was going to say it should hold for a while. So each time you click it, it advances a little bit more with mm -hmm. light and you get five levels. Mm -hmm. It's battery powered, can last up to six hours. All of that was in our video. Mm -hmm. He contacted us and said, we have a new version of the light board. And we said, we'd love to see it. It is this. He sent us a comparable size. So this is their a four, they call them. Um, and then it is corded power. So it doesn't have a battery, which makes it paper thin the yeah. whole way across. Yeah, it's thin Very thin lightweight. And when you turn it on, you just tap the light and it advances and you get the different lights. And then if I can do this the right way. Okay, so you get the different shades by tapping it, the different types of light. And then when you hold it, it increases and you do it again and it slowly decreases it's very fun to work with yeah. and um we will put the link to this product in our description box along with all the details and i laid that on there just so you could see do we go ahead let me have that one more time mm -hmm. if you'll turn that on i'm going to fold this so you can see this is the thickness of one page of copy paper and when you put it on there and you have it lit up, you can see that image very well through mm -hmm. there. And so you can use it to trace. You might want more than one page, but what this to me said was, if you're doing your own montage and you wanna keep a paper record of where you position things, or you wanna change a pattern a little bit and use it a little differently, this is the perfect device to give you that ability to rechart something, to change the chart a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can get yourself some graph paper, put it over top of your design, mm -hmm. move things around. I think it's wonderful. It is. And don't forget for punch needle. This is awesome. Yes. No longer do you have to hold it up to the window. That's the exact same <laughs> depth with awesome. the fabric and the copy yeah. uh, as yeah. the punch needle. Yeah. And I love how paper thin this one is. Yes. That's neat. Yeah. Now, again, the difference on this model is to power it, you're mm -hmm. in an electric cord, but mm -hmm. then you don't have the loss of power. There are other versions of that model out there mm -hmm. as well. So thank yeah. you, Alan, for sharing that yes, with us. You. And it is a wonderful device. We were thrilled. Oh, and it comes with some fun pieces too. Are they in the, 
right up there on the counter yes. next to it. You get your basic instruction sheet that tells you what you have to have and don't have. And then you get um, you get an eraser, a pencil, and a sharpener. sharpener, as well as four little magnetic holders that will hold your paper on your light board. Yeah. So it, there's very little you need except mm -hmm. your power outlet. Yep. <laughs> and again... Um, check the description box for all the details on that. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Definitely. To claim. I like that gadget. I do too. We would like to, um, are we? We're going to spotlight. Okay. I don't mind me sure I wasn't jumping again. Nope. We're on track. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good. Good. Yes. We would like to spotlight a designer today. And th uh, the designer we'd like to talk about is um, Beth Twist. We have taken some classes from her, um, and she's just, she's fantastic. She has gorgeous designs, and we wanted to be able to show you some of the patterns we have of hers, um, and a finish that we both did when we yes. took a class at Salty Yarns with Beth. She had these cute little Ork boxes we did. Uh, Deb has her needle minder on hers, um, yep, mine's at home on my project, but... Um, well, actually, it's probably in my folder. Um, these pretty little pins were also given to us with the class. Yes. She attached her strawberry. Mine's on my tree. <laughs> so there's the top This of was it. the first piece I stitched. Is it? I did the, okay. I did the strawberry before I did the lid. And here's uh, underneath of my lid. What, and we had a pre-stitch on this. Yes, we did. Okay, so we have the same fabric. Uh-huh. Right. Yep. Yes. And it was a great class. It gave us lots of tips we didn't know before about doing different things. The lid was mm -hmm. really interesting, the way she put that together. Mm -hmm. um, I liked that a lot. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we had a great time. And these, oh, these pins she gave us? Look oh, at those flowers. Aren't I they know. gorgeous? I have, I have always wondered where she found those. Yeah. They, they are, are so pretty. pretty. They are very pretty. We may have some. Oh, this is real quick, too. We used that topper on our strawberries. Didn't we get that from um, Faye? Faye. Faye mm -hmm. Rigsby. Yep. Yeah, and that, that turned out so cute on the top of the In strawberry. In fact, uh, Beth was really excited when she saw them. <laughs> cute. And I think we've seen them on something she did after that, didn't we? On one of her. Oh, I don't know. Something about there. Or maybe we saw it on somebody else's. Um, so another pattern of Beth's is uh, her motto pattern. Yes. Okay, we good. started we this piece with Beth. We were looking for a collaboration and she came to mind when I saw this pattern of hers and Deb and I chatted about it. And this is now charted for Share the Joy of Needlework. Mm -hmm. That's our motto sampler. And that looks like this when it's done. Mm -hmm. And you can get that motto on her site. We'll put the link into the description box for you. And you can join us on this. Um, we're both working on it. Yep. Different fabrics, different levels. I restarted mine. So <laughs> um, I did not care for. This is what I have so far. My fabric originally. And um, I'm stitching it, stitching this on 40 count. And is it 40? Yes. Yes. And it's over one. Um, I'm trying to remember what this fabric is. I know that it has some very, 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 very microscopic <laughs> threads on it. <laughs> so it's not the easiest to work on, but I, I love the color of it. I'm going to continue, um, cause I have that whole side, that whole corner finished, but I really want to get back into this. It's so pretty. It is. Now this was how I started and I did, I was off to a good start mm -hmm. working away, mm -hmm. but this is over one on 30 count is what I started on. And I did not care for the fabric and I kept finding myself not wanting to pick it up. Yeah. So then finally I decided to take the plunge, put it away and get out a piece of Belfast. Um, and it's just called clay and I'm going over two. So mine's going to be larger, but I am really enjoying this fabric. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So I did find the fabric. 
um, and I lied. It's 30 count classic homespun by weeks. Oh, it's the same one I started on then. Okay. Yep. Well, I can understand why you changed. Yep. <laughs> I just couldn't. I love the color, but wow. Yeah. I don't know it's... why I thought you were working on smaller fabric than I was. No. So yours no. would have been the same size as this yeah. then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Because it's over one. Yep. Yep. Um, and these are the colors. They're really, really pretty. They are just a beautiful palette. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you... Um, on yours doing a full stitch or a tent stitch? Yeah, full. full. Okay. I had done mine with a tent stitch. Oh, and, okay. Um, All of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it, it did really nice job on the coverage, but mm -hmm. uh, I just, it was too tedious for me. I, and the fabric was just too much of a challenge. Yes. I definitely have to make sure I have my um, very strong glasses on with this fabric. <laughs> Because like I said, man, there are some skinny, skinny little threads in here that you think. Yeah, you almost, you know when you find out you're not on one is when you get to that next stitch and you're not at a yes. a, a vertical stitch. Oh. And you go, wait a minute. Yes. And then you go back and you find that tiny, bitty, bitty one. And I'm sorry, but trying to rip out yeah. over one on small count, Lord, what, ugh, not fun. awful. No, it's not fun at all. No. Oh, by the way. Oh. I think this is available in this form now. I think I think it is too. The uh, just pattern, to the pins know. and orts pattern that if you would like to stitch that, that we just showed you the finish. Now, I'm not sure about the item. You may have to do a different pin right. for it. Right, right. Um, and you can go to Beth's website and check that out. And just to get back to the pattern, the Choose Your Own Motto pattern, she has Zappy Dots also with our motto on it. Sure. So can't. Right. Share the is joy of needlework. Can, or is no, that the that's pins hers. Or, yeah, okay. that's hers. Mine is upstairs on my montage. So it's the same zappy dot that was on her Ort can, the same type of needle minder. Yes. But it has our... Yes. It, it looks just like what I showed you only in the round. Yes. And if you go to Beth's website, she has some of those needle minders left. And for our viewers, she is giving you a 20% off coupon code. Um, it, the code will be in the description box. Liz will put it in there and it's zappy joy 20. So when you go on her site, you can grab a needle minder, um, share the joy of needlework and, uh, grab get a 20% off. Yeah. <laughs> What's a motto with you? Yes. Um, so thank you very much, Beth. That's, that's wonderful. And if you should happen to have that pattern already, the motto is a PDF format. Mm. So you can download, share the joy of needlework and add it to your pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I got a new pattern of hers since I saw you last. I stuck it in yeah, here know, since we were beautiful. doing it. I really like it. It reminds me, wouldn't you love to like do something with that Lila Studio pattern with all the crabs oh, and everything this. and yeah. put this with it? I, yeah. Still processing Cute. that idea. But it's called Seahorse Soiree and it's a biscornu. That is really pretty. It's very pretty. And you can see in the center down here, that's the back of it. And it's got the jellyfish and the, what was the other thing? Yeah, just the jellyfish coming down there along <laughs> the edges. And is that a crab also on the one side? There's a crab. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A crab mm -hmm. and a fish are oh, also. Oh, look at the turtle. Oh, yeah, that's now that's the top. Then that's on the back mm. with two jellyfish. Mm. That is so really it's a pretty. crab, fish, and two jellyfish that are on the back side. Mm -hmm. that come up around the biscornu. Very cute. Oh, I love this one. This is brown bird biscornu. Mm, gosh. And here's another example. I worked this on some even weave I didn't care for. So when I get back to this, I think I'm going to put this back onto a linen and not an even weave. Mm -hmm. um, here's another one that is called Festive Little Fobs, and this is Seaside Edition. Okay, I'll pull that a, one you out. You can have a whole bowl full of um, summer stuff. Oh, yep, yep you got that one too. Yep. Farm and Folk Penny Cushions. I got this when I was working at Stitches Unlimited. I really like that pattern, and I want to do this one. There's a handful of these that I want to do for my summer bowl. Um, that would be a cute one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one, the Prairie Life Sampler. Anybody who is in love with Laura Ingalls and the <laughs> House on the Prairie. Um, I am keeping this pattern with my montage things because I'm I'm probably going to pull something from this and stick on my montage. Here is a little sampler. It's um, a bit like a mandala around the outside. Um, and the inside says, what <laughs> <good."> 
<laughs> I love the humor in that. Whip it. Whip it good. And I, I actually have a flower thread color that was given to me by a viewer. Um, and I'm thinking of using that flower thread. I just have not decided on my fabric for that one yet, though. And this sampler, I think, is so pretty. I love um, it. I love that in the grass. in the grass yes. area. Gosh, that Beautiful. is so pretty. It's beautiful. How, what is that? So it's Fennis. Where are you looking? Fennis Gowls. Um, the name Hall, eighteen twenty four. Yeah, I don't know where that building is. Probably in some city mm. somewhere. I got a few of these in a row here that are all these little um, fobs, which could be little pillows, too, if you mm -hmm. chose to combine them. That would be cute, wouldn't it? Put them all on one littler pillow together. Oh, yeah, you could do that, yeah. So this is called Festive Fobs. It's got a lot of stitchy references to it, too, with yeah. scissors and needles. Did you have any more of these? No, okay. go ahead. This one is um, the Valentine Edition. Now, we keep talking about Beth Twist, but the name of her design company is um, Heartstring Samplers. This Samplery. is Festive Little Fobs. Sampler, sorry. Yeah, we'll just lead you in the right direction. <laughs> Follow us. We go anywhere <laughs> and everywhere. Uh, and this last one is Festive Little Fobs, their Harvest Edition. <laughs> that last one was the Woodland Edition. You should do a whole bowl of the little woodland characters for yeah. rats for Yeah. All right, so that's, that's what, um, also with all these fobs that um, Liz just showed you. This back here, this wooden mm, over there thing that we have on top of the table, <laughs> <Somewhere> back <here. laughs> right over Liz's head. Yes, um, I'm an I wall had been getting questions about that. <laughs> um, uh, at Salty Yarns, a long time ago, they have uh, something like that in their store. And I took a picture of it and came home and asked Matt if he could make me one. <laughs> so he made one for me and one for Liz. And that's also something cute that you could hang all those fobs off yes. of, too. It's just, um, you know, some dowel rods and a, um, a piece of wood that was probably for, like, a fence post or something. Like a banister, so, almost. Yeah, like a, something like that. I so, forget what you call them. Um, anyway, I, when you were showing all those fobs, I thought, oh, that would look fun. Yeah. Uh, like, hang a whole bunch of different ones on yeah. there. It would be really cool. Yep. Um, this is really pretty. This is called Never Let You Go, and I think this is really a beautiful sampler. Oh, all of my finding all those strange things we we resurrected from my past earlier mm -hmm. um, was the result of me putting floss away and cleaning out the craft room. <laughs> Here is one of the know. first patterns I think I actually bought of um, Beth's. It's called Coffee Quaker. Mm -hmm. This was very popular oh, when yeah. it came out. Yeah. Uh, there, you didn't go into a room of stitchers that somebody wasn't right. working on this yep. somewhere. I love this one. I might as well show this now. Yes. And I have not actually, I've not actually started that one yet. Um, then one year, uh, Beth did these um, PDF files that you could order from her and put on a mug. And so I did this for Dev and I for Christmas one year. I mm -hmm. got these uh, from Beth's website and took them to Costco's and Costco's does this for you. You just bring in the PDF file. So that was fun. It was so funny because I just drank out of mine this morning when she got her mug out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about bringing that down. And then I have another uh, sampler again. This was once everybody started referring to groups of people as nations, uh, this one came out and yeah. it's called Cross Stitch Nation. Yeah. And people have done so many different things with this yes. stitch it's really cool and they've also uh i've seen the colors changed i've seen um i've seen them finished on different things i saw this as a drum too yes very very yes. pretty as a drum yes. so i think i might do mine as a drum yeah i think that would be fun to put my curio cabinet and this sampler is beautiful it's called forever young i like that one mm -hmm. the um pomegranate basket if you will i love that uh, for some reason that icon mm -hmm. appeals to me yep yep 
And then we both have this book we that do. Beth was, um, she gifted us last year at market. It is a fantastic book. Oh it my is. goodness. Small Samplings One. It's a collection of antique needleworks and you get lots of many beautiful patterns in here. And I got to see this one was in her, I mean, not that I there weren't other gonna, ones in yeah. there, but this one she had in her um, studio when she was uh, so at good. Nashville. And I got to see the original with that yeah. as well as her version of it. It's really neat. Yeah. So this is a beautiful book. So we hope that um, yeah. you might have seen something in here that yes. inspires you um, from Beth's collection. And there yes. is much more than what we shared oh, gosh, with you. Yes. So oh, take goodness. the time. Her um, her site will be in the description box mm -hmm. so that you can look up those uh, zappy dots and also her patterns. And yes, check it out. See all the goodies that she has. Yes. And we didn't okay. want to finish without a finish. <laughs> yeah. um, I actually did get my sewing machine out. Believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and I did do some sewing. Um, I did not <laughs> finish all of what I sewed. Um, so I will, uh, you'll be seeing some of those in the future because I did the sewing part, but not all the stuffing. And my goodness. The stuffing part takes forever sometimes on a bigger pillow. <laughs> but, for instance, I have to show you, this is something I'm going to undo. Um, this is that uh, Threadwork Primitive finish of the, the fall one. But the problem was, I wanted it to look like the Christmas one I had. Oh, okay. But I do not like that That ink spot linen with it at all. Um, I'm going to undo this. Once I did it, and again, this is the color issue. I was in the kitchen. I had on fluorescent lighting, and it was kind of, I think it was bright outside. can't quite remember, but I, I picked what was called ink spot. I thought it looked darker than it was, and when I put it on, it's a, it's totally gray. Do you call that gray? That's the, so the interesting. See, to me, you that's You don't see gray. blue? Well, I see a, a blue hue to it, but it's actually called Ink Spot, and I thought it was gray. Really? Yeah. But wow. it definitely doesn't go well with the, the hat at all, um, or the bird. The bird has a sort of a brown look to it. The hat's blacker, but that linen, I'm not going to I'm yeah. not gonna leave that. I'm going to redo that. I see a lot of blue. Okay. In that. Yep. Huh. Definitely more blue in that than... Um... Oh, my belly's growing. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to have to throw food at Deb soon. We are. Um, and then, like I said, I, I put backs on a couple of other little ones, but I didn't I didn't stuff those. Oh, but but that little guy, I just thought that was funny. And then I have a couple of different um, edgings that I'm going to play with on those. Yeah. Maybe do some beading. I'm not sure. But cool. I didn't want to rush that ooh, ooh, ooh. because then I thought if I beautiful. rushed it. Yeah. I thought about oh, that I with this. I wish you had this. Should yeah. I put it on the bottom? Yes. Okay. That's beautiful. I do have a bigger piece of it. I have yeah. to see if it's big enough. Yeah, I love that. Okay. That's really pretty. It's a, like a plaid wool felt. Yeah. It's got fall colors in that it. That would be really nice there. Very cute. <laughs> sometimes I think I'm glad she doesn't see my first choices sometimes. That would make her run from the building. <laughs> you picked that up? <laughs> yep. That was me. All me. Um, I did some crocheting because I found this little PDF pattern online and Oh. Okay, I won't say won't laugh. Don't laugh because if it's funny looking, you should laugh. Oh, it's, it's nice. entertainment. He's a little wonky. He's a peep bunny, you yeah. know, like the little mush, An Easter peep. marshmallow yeah. guys. Um, but I have some places where he's a little misshapen because of my stitching. But he was fun to do. You just sew him shut at the bottom. I actually was able to piece his ears together and start the top with it. That was something I'd never done before. So that was fun to learn. But my counting wasn't a hundred percent. And the I little think he nose looks and mouth. So cute. The girls like him. Yes. And then these are two other ones. If we get the, uh, I have both ears done, which is the tough part for me. Oh. So once I got the ears done, the body should go along pretty well. So we have two more at home in these colors. <laughs> but I thought I would show you that either I really am um, an unpredictable stitcher. <laughs> Or my tension isn't consistent because these are both the same number of rows. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she liked that, didn't she? So 
If you count it, that's nine. And if you count this one, it's nine. But I think what it and is... It's the same thickness of... Well, that's what I think is different. Uh, this this has more body to it than this does. Okay. And so you get a smaller ear bunny than you will this. And even this one's oh, yeah. about the same. So those two must be similar. But this guy, he's going to be a little minier version yeah. of that. But be anyway, it'll tiny be, little peep. It'll be Or fun. you have a new symbol. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I actually, I hurt my fingers, but I don't like band-aids. <laughs> These are my new finger cots. <laughs> Got a boo-boo? <laughs> Mama will make you an ear. Hi, we used to have a boo-boo bunny when we were little. Yes. That is a good idea. And if you put like one of those little ice uh -huh. things in here, this could be boo-boo bunny. Yep. I had um, a boo-boo bunny when Carrie was little. They were cute. That's so funny. We were putting away everything in the nursery. And it came to my mind. And I said, oh, did you get a boo-boo bunny? She goes, oh. No, that means boo-boo bunny. So she got right on Amazon and ordered some. Oh, oh I can gosh. see. The Amazon, they wait for her calls every day. They are not going to understand what has happened when no. she moves out of here and they don't come down the driveway every day. Oh, my day. gosh. He'll have like an extra hour for lunch exactly. break. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> They're going to be so confused. <laughs> uh, I finally got the finish for the Jeanette Douglas Christmas one. I actually went a different direction. She did pom-poms, but the ones I ordered from La Di Da, uh, the colors just did not look right for me. That's going to be a laugh now every time I say that. <laughs> Whether you they believe it or look, not, they, they did didn't. not go well. <laughs> so I found the chenille and I did the chenille on this one. So now I have a third one to go. Oh and then God. last but not least, I was finishing this when we did our uh, mm. friends video. Mm -hmm. It's the Stitch All Things. I think I had just finished this. And here is my Yay. version. And... I think it came out pretty cute. It is cute. Um, interesting. I tried that trick. Uh, Hands-on design and, um, and, and seals. stitch works. Yes. Um, Beth and Kathy taught us that when you do a pillow, if you, instead of going straight across, you go a little bit of an arch on the top of your pattern when you cut it, it will not be scooped when you finish stitching it and look like it's got ears it'll be straighter across and mm -hmm. i wanted to show you i did that on here and i like the way that looks um i did not do it at the bottom <laughs> no i mean i did that on purpose i wanted i wanted to be able to show the difference and i really it's noticeable it's yeah. very noticeable so adding a little more fabric to the top cool. and it has to do not obviously with the stitching or the fabric as it does what happens when you stuff it. It draws it up. <laughs> yeah. And so it draws it from the ends. And I think you could do that on every side and get yeah. a square pillow. Yeah. yeah. So we we'll see how well I do that with my next sewing machine <laughs> experience. But anyway, that's very my... cool. And then I had beads that I thought were cool because yeah. they kind of all picked up the shades. They do. Of the, yeah. of the, um, words at the bottom there i had those beads Cute. and safety pins so good job. there's my oh <laughs> erica michaels pillow <laughs> and my fast hands <laughs> nice good job thank you very cool so um lunch <laughs> yes and before we do that i wanted to just say quickly that we are planning another get together for stitching mm -hmm. uh looks like it'll probably be the very end of may or early in june sometime yeah, we're checking our calendars and mm -hmm. checking theirs but yep. it's going to be in the quarryville area yes and we are going to have a much larger room so lots and lots we'll of people be able to and a longer more people. time together yes so yeah so we're taking into account everything everybody said, and mm -hmm. we're on the go, and we're hoping to get that on the <laughs> calendar before too long. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we thank you for joining us. Yep. I and think as that, always. I think that's it, right? Oh, sorry. Yes. No, that's all right. I'm, <laughs> we're out of here. Her, her belly has not stopped growling. I know. <laughs> I should bring a little bowl of treats down here. Give you one at a time. Yeah, but then I'm not allowed to eat on camera. And that's true. Well, that's you can just, you know, fall under the table once in a while. I get in trouble when I eat on camera. <laughs> yes. You're just Especially terrible. Especially candy cane. Yes, now. you're terrible. <laughs> Boy, that goes back a ways, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh, well. Enjoy your <laughs> upcoming stitching time. Yes. And as always, share, share the dream work. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>